Day of September 2021, and we're still with Governor uh, Francis Kimemia. We have uh, Robert Mboy, MP Kadiani, Javas Bigambo, governance expert, as well as uh, Dr. Pamela Odiambo, who is uh, joining us from Kisi. And Governor, there is a law that has been proposed by the County Assemblies Forum, or has been sent to the Assemblies. Of course, um, uh, the forwarding letter is signed by your speaker, the speaker of Nyandarwa, and he talks about uh, providing for retirement benefits for governors, and we had uh, an extensive discussion yesterday. I just want to get the feeling of the panelists here, because it says that retired governors will receive um, a year's pay, that comes to about 11.1 .1 million shillings as lump sum payout, uh, plus receive 80% of their last basic pay every single month for the rest of their lives. And when we did our calculations, um, including the cost for the gov retired governors, retired deputy governors, and retired speakers, it would come to about 715 million shillings every year. Are you in support of this bill, and what's the case for it? Yeah, yeah, no, it's a very, very good question. But I thought uh, I, I should also maybe make one or two comments about uh, you know the discussion that okay, went on. Okay, go ahead. I think it's very important to to, to appreciate that we need to strengthen devolution, but we also need to look at what what are the issues in the devolution. And and from where I sit, it's really you know poverty of resources. Like you know my development agenda in the entire county is 1.8 billion shillings to develop 25 wards in the county. If you had uh, medicine takes almost. Uh, 30 40 percent of that money and Minister of Health. Uh, so, the less you have to battle with roads, education, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Funds did not follow functions. Uh, we have seen COVID complicating on you know, on list source, you know, you know the, the, the revenue. revenue collection, on mm -hmm. source revenue. Uh, we, we need to also you know, discuss the issue of uh, the quality, the in, in going forward, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, from and, and it, it's unfortunate I'm saying this the issue. You know that, that you know those who pay, those who pay are likely to to be elected than those who, if you are a poor person, you are likely to be to, to be elected. You mm -hmm. know, in this country, mm -hmm. if you have nothing, really, you're just coming up with ideologies and very good manuscripts. You you are, and you have nothing. I think that's an issue that we need to. Then the issue of involving people, not only in, in the public participation, but also in the implementation of the budgets. So if a lot is being done, get one G also to check are uh, the 72 lorries per kilometer being, you know. Uh, you know, you know, we're taken to the to the roads, or is it 20 or 30 instead of the 72 that is supposed to be as, as per the BQs? Mm -hmm. Get one inch involved in those, even in those. Those people are very, very intelligent now. Graduates are there, retired, retired PSCs, retired presidents, retired public officers who are very retired professionals. I think we need to demystify mm -hmm. this, all this issue of devolution and get people involved in, even to understand that you have one governor has only 1.8 or 2 billion things to implement, and it is divided this way. And also, to get them also involved in, and uh, we know, and that is when there is maybe transparent, mm -hmm. uh, transparent, uh, you know, ad ad and also the quality of leadership that one actually put. Those countries that you know that will appoint uh, elect people because of possibly what is given out will be in trouble. Mm -hmm. I think going forward, you will find counties like Makweni, right, or counties like Nyandaro, where you have transformative leaderships. Uh, we have had. Um, uh, uh, Clean, you know, clean audits, clean, you know, clean bill of health, you know, health from the audit. Mm -hmm. well, the only two counties that that got a clean, uh, clean audit reports. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we 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 have won under and, and the World Bank rankings. Nyanda has been number one three years, and number two first year, and we have mo almost one billion shillings. We have been able to construct our roads using the same money which have been able to, to buy equipment. Though, to, though some say to that your county roads. is home to some yes, of the But I think something else I wanted roads. to say, that even, even in the county, not deep state, but the, the state of the county, or mm -hmm. the government of the counties, mm -hmm. they are generally very weak, and they need to be strengthened. Okay. Because a county is, 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 is just as good as the national government. So the governments of the counties, we are not capacitated. We did not do capacity building to, to put in a, you know, a credible bureaucracy. So that needs to, and, and I'm talking as a former Head of public service and right. looking at how this nation needs to move, to move forward. Not because I'm a governor. We need to, you know, build capacity in the counties so that they're able to run ministries, run departments, run sections. You know, department, you know, realization of the of the of the of the, of the counties, and then creating structures up to them. But, but how do you do that? Because one would think that because you have the county public service board and yourself with all the experience, at yes. least you'd be in a position to implement such a system in your county what's the biggest challenge at the moment you see if i'm a governor and i came from i came from government myself what if i came from say civil society and i've been elected as a governor i've never learned government this is 
pure you know county government is is, is just the national government in a smaller in a smaller light in a smaller mirror so, mm -hmm. so you, we need we need to have a training program for leaders okay and for, even for, for for governors as we okay as we, the, the issue of funds not flowing uh, you know you know as you know as predictable as it should, as it should be i think has been a very major challenge to to devolution. Let, so, let's now get, get to that question about because with all these challenges, shortage of resources, because you're saying they have just about 1.8 billion shillings to develop your county, yes. part of which largely will go to medical services. Yet there's this proposal uh, by the County Assemblies Forum in collaboration with the Council of Governors to come up with retirement benefits for yourselves when you retire. What, what, what are your thoughts about this? Well, you see, the, the, the issue is, is uh, uh, governors the only ones who are asking, who, who are who are requesting for this enjoyment, or for this, you know, you know, you know, ben these benefits? All the other leaders, mm -hmm. <laughs> all the leaders, from president to members of parliament, are enjoying it. So why should the county governments be discriminated against? The issue is looking at the sustainability of of the budgets, of the resources, mm -hmm. and also equity. I mean, whatever is whatever is will be applied in the counties should be equitably. You know, you should see equity from national government to the county governments. But the fact that I'm a governor doesn't make him worse than, say, a senator or, or an MP who enjoy his, his, benef his, his benefits. Why would you want to discriminate against one, one government? Against but, but, but I thought MPs have contributory pension scheme? Yes, we do. Y yes. Y yours we, is, we, y the governors are just to be given for the rest of their lives to receive 80% of their last monthly pay. Is it fair? We, we also, we, for we also just moving to, to, to we, we also recommending you know contributory contributory you know pension scheme even mm -hmm. in the counties, mm -hmm. and uh, so so it should. Uh, that's what I'm saying. There should be equity across across board. Mm -hmm. Yes, and also look at and also do a weightage. What what is really what should really governors or or, or or MCAs or speakers get relative to what others are getting in the national government. But I think to just discriminate against them because they're in the county government, mm -hmm. I think it's not right. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, and Horrible Mboi, uh, oh no, let me first go to Dr. Pamela Odiambo. I think she, was there. She, she, she hasn't spoken in a couple of minutes. Dr. Pamela Odiambo, what are your thoughts if the county governments or the county coffers are to spare resources to pay former governors for the rest of their lives, former deputy governors and former speakers, and what should be the procedure? in enacting such a law should it just end at the county assembly or it needs to go to parliament because it's a question that talks about benefits for state officers uh some i, I think uh, as i said earlier the whole issue of county governance was uh, new to kenyans in uh, 2013 and i think as we be, tried to unpack the law and then implement it. Uh, everything that uh, is supposed to show, uh, have gone alongside it was not done. I think all we need to think about here is the overall human resource management system or policy that we have in Kenya. Right from the presidency, I think they have a package, they have uh, some pension even in parliament where we sit, uh serving for a certain number of years like i think for the parliamentarians is 10 years they are supposed to be having some kind of uh, uh money that they would be paid the pension and so i think if we look at it from the component of uh, strategic human re resource management in our country then we should come up with a policy that ensures that every servant who has served the government or any other um institution private or public should be uh, their retirement should be looked at and there should be some way of giving them some support even after their retirement but, but so do, i don't but dr pamela in, dr pamela there's already gratuity provided for in the laws that have already uh, in the policies that have already been approved by src shouldn't that be enough after serving for a contractual term of 60 months you know, the, the concept of gratuity is good, but I think uh, some what we have in the country, in the practical experience, Kenyans have uh, proved it that if you took a lump sum of money and gave them the very first month that uh, they retired, then this money would be used. So uh, I, I would rather even wish that uh, this policy be reviewed. If this money can be translated into some sort of pension to give these people gradually as they age, to me, it would be a better deal. Because you have even seen, I think we can cite so many people. We have seen MPs who have served the first term, and they were given the gratuity by the end of the day if they didn't uh, make it back to 
parliament. <laughs> Within a short time, we have seen these people live and die very miserable lives. So what I'm advocating is, let us come up with a universal, all-inclusive human resource policy that will uh, plan for our people as they get into various positions. All right. And then even as it, how do we take care of them to the end of their lives on earth? I think that kind of policy, even if it means bringing this discussion to the county assemblies and even to the national assembly and reviewing our laws and creating amendments to make this work, to me, that would be the best option. Okay. And Honorable Mbui, as you reflect on this, uh, yesterday we had that discussion and there appears to be that you cannot implement such kind of uh, retirement benefits for these state officers at the county if you have not consulted the Salaries and Remuneration Commission because it's the one that is responsible for benefits for state officers. Uh, but also, you cannot just enact a law that cuts across all the counties without involving parliament. I don't know, I don't know whether you have the same persuasion and what's the best way of dealing with this because they say they are being discriminated but um, the country would have thought that it has sorted that out by giving them gratuity. Yeah, thank you. I, I think first and foremost, uh, it's, it's important to note that uh, the county assembly's uh, laws would, uh, would only affect uh, individual county assemblies. But if you're, if you're interested in doing something that is, um, as, a, as the governor said, that uh, you know, translates to what happens at the national level, then it needs to go to Senate so that it comes to the National Assembly and then it is passed there. But uh, the idea of uh, people getting a retirement benefit is not a bad idea. But I, I want to say that leaders also have to plan their lives. You cannot be a leader for five years or ten years and expect to live off the public for the rest of your life. I mean, clearly clearly, the, the National Assembly uh, scheme is contributory. We actually do contribute money every month and it's not little money. So in the long run, that money is what is uh, basically given back to you over, over a period. And I think uh, the same idea would not be a bad idea for the counties. Only only I think the amount of money that one gets even at the end of it all, because I had the, num the kind of figures. Uh, somebody talked about 740,000 a month and I thought that's really ridiculous because even, even, even members of parliament one more than a million would probably get about a hundred and something per month after after retirement. So I think it's uh, the figures need also to be looked at. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really it's really important. Otherwise, um, I, I think um, my, for, for from where I sit, I think. Uh, the, 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 I've heard the governor say that uh, the majority of the money they're getting is going into, I think, um, you know, into into daily daily consumption, mm -hmm. and uh, you know the, the the overheads and all these. And and if you're going to in, to increase the burden by ensuring that uh, all future monies released to the counties are also paying uh, former 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 yes. governors, mm -hmm. deputy governors, speakers, then I mean, in the, in another five, ten, twenty, I mean. Let's let's say four or five terms, then probably all the money will just be going into paying their salaries. So I think it's important to look at this very critically. Mm -hmm. All right, and Javas, of course, uh, the case of Governor here, he has been in the public service for several years. I'm sure you have some pension somewhere. Uh, so I don't know whether it should vary or the framework that should operate uh, with all these situations. Uh, but then secondly, is it that the council, uh, the council of Governors and the County Assemblies Forum are, no, are not aware of what SRC is supposed to do. And do you think Parliament has to be involved in such kind of uh, enactment? Really, first, in a larger sense, the universal purpose of devolution was a promissory note to curate marginalization and take care of the people. The people are supposed to be taken care of. They are the center of devolution, not the leaders. And we are seeing the narrative, the discussions, interests, policies being shaped in such a manner that they are drifting away from the people's general benefits. Mm -hmm. The issue, for example, of uh, governors who've retired and speakers who've retired and deputy governors who've retired, having all these benefits is very interesting, to say the least. First, while it's proper that leaders get to have such kind of retirement benefits all over the world, leaders are properly taken care of when they are executing their services and serving the people, serving the country, not after that. But in the case, for example, of parliament, where they contribute and that scheme is such that it will take care of them, then that is proper. Haven't we then also learned from the case of BBI just the other day that if a matter is being 
executed or prosecuted or handled in such a manner that it is contrary to the provisions and the understanding of the law, mm -hmm. then in the end, in the final analysis, cold water will be poured upon it. Where is the place of the SRC mm -hmm. in this whole entire discussion and process? The SRC is a serious institution created, serves a purpose, mm -hmm. and should not be sidestepped by the Council of Governors, right. by the County Assemblies Forum, in trying to work around this mechanism of retirement benefits for governors. Okay. The other additional thing is that I think we must look at it, and you've just made a comparison and the case of uh, Governor Kimemi here, that having served in the national government and retired, he has got a, a rolling retirement you know, uh, benefit scheme. Then he serves as governor, leaves office, another rolling one. Here we are seeing uh, persons who are enjoying retirement benefits as a former prime minister, former vice president, enjoying plum benefits as retired. And then, of course, they are thirsting, of course, for these higher positions. We need to come to a point where we also put the people at the heart of all these kinds of policies that we execute, such that while we want to give an appreciation as a nation to the distinguished leaders who have served the people, right. it must be not uh, done in such a manner that somebody's ambition would want just to get into office and serve even one term and then will be taken care of the rest of their for lives. the rest of their lives, so that when they are running for office, they are actually running for retirement. <laughs> we should not have that kind of perspective. <laughs> All right. Uh, Governor Kivemi, I'll give you the right of reply and the final word on this. Um, so how do you intend, because there are those questions about involvement of SRC and parliament at the national level, how do you intend to correct those so that whatever you're doing is within the law? But secondly, maybe from a personal uh, reflection, when you've had accumulated a bit of pension, whether it's through contributory or whatever scheme it is, how does it work if you get elected to an office like yourself now? Uh, no, very good question. Uh, you know, as I said, we, 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 there, there must be equitable. I mean, the, in terms of parity of treatment must mm. apply. There mm. must be equitable uh, considerations for county government officials, uh, in just like the national government, uh, you know, you know uh, officers. And, and the issue should be to ensure that there is that you know the law is adhered to. Mm -hmm. I can assure you this matter has gone to summit. It has been referred to COG. We have had discussions with SRC, and I'm sure after this, more discussions will be will be will be engaged with both Parliament, with all the institutions that matter okay. with the Treasury. And I talked about the affor affordability, mm -hmm. you know, the affordability of the of the of, of the of the county governments, the national government to to pay this. And I think this should be looked at macro, you know, from a macro perspective. All right. So we are not just looking at counties, but also from the macro, you know, point of view. And also maybe have models, for, you know, for a pension. Mm -hmm. What would be the pension budget for this country, you know, moving forward? Mm -hmm. But for now, you can't just discriminate county governments. We should all look at the, you know, the entire pension issue, mm -hmm. which is becoming a major issue. Okay. It's, it's almost so becoming an affordable. For you, gratuity is not enough. Y yes, it's not enough. I think it's, it's good. Maybe, maybe there's the, 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 something that needs to be discussed, you know, in greater details. But I can assure you, as I see, mm -hmm. are going to be involved in So, so, in so now, for you, having retired from the public yes, service... Yes, I have a pension. Yes. Uh -huh. and, and of course, when, even when I retire as a governor, maybe some top-up. <laughs> because I've also... Both, there are those who retired with me are I do, at home. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm here, I'm here handling services. So, so, so you can't so, tell so me that now because we are being paid for being head of public service, you cannot be, paid, you know, you can't get something for. Because I'm also getting a salary, even though I'm getting a pension, because I'm a governor and I'm serving. I'm there. Governor, you, know, you are so, doing well. So, 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 <laughs> so when when you retire, at least something, you know, should, should apply. Just as the governor was not a par head of public service or a public servant, will also get something. Well, I think the issue is the affordability. How do you, will the will the economy be able to afford? The pension budget mm -hmm. moving forward. What's your answer? I think that is what you, I, I'm not, I, 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 we need to look at the figures in Treasury, but I, but I can assure you, it's not going to be very easy. It's interesting that um, you acknowledge that question because that's that's where Kenyans are struggling at because 
like now you know the cost of living has just skyrocketed over the past few days because yeah. of the cost of fuel. There are all these challenges with an economy that is not doing so well. We have situations of public debt, the revenue that we collect, a good chunk of it goes to paying public debt. And that's why all these conversations are coming in. I want us to make um, progress by looking at uh, the stakes of the 2022 general election and start by listening to some leaders that spoke in Ivasha yesterday. They call themselves the Mount Kenya Forum. Listen. Um, has today unanimously uh, chosen the Honorable Mother Karua to be our official convener and our spokesperson. Nobody should stop any community of interest to come together, see together, eat together and articulate their issues. This is beyond the presidential race. It is about permanent community of interest and permanent issues that need to be addressed. And this is not only for this generation, it's for generations to come. The interests of the mountain are paramount to ourselves as we think as Kenyans. All right, those are leaders from Mount, a section of leaders from Mount Kenya region, they met in Naivasha, but there are some others that are meeting uh, somewhere is it in Amboseli and they were speaking with Deputy President William Ruto and these were the arguments on the way forward for uh, the Ukambani region. Again, a section of leaders from Ukambani region. Listen. Na hiyo blueprint ndiyo tutapiga sahihi na His Excellency the Deputy President ambaye ndiyo candidate wetu wa UDA akigombea kiti cha urais. Na hiyo contract ni ya Deputy President Binafsi na watu wa ukambani wote. You know, so many Kenyans are asking why competitors of the Deputy President are panicked. Today I can tell Kenyans uh, they panic because they know that the Deputy President has a plan. In the past, it has never happened that citizens at all levels are engaged in the process of developing a blueprint for purposes of forming a political movement with the intention of forming government. Of course, there have been several meetings um, by different political leaders, whether they are presidential aspirants or they are regional leaders trying to come together to find an agenda for their region. But let me begin with you, Honorable Robert, Robert Mboe, because a section of leaders from your region, Machakos, Kitui, and uh, Makueni, just met the deputy president, and they are saying that their biggest challenges are in the areas of water, agriculture, food security, all those concerns that have been issues for so many years, for decades, including when uh, devolution started in 2013. So how are you planning? I, I, is it of interest that as a region you speak in one voice or you're just more of um, having a presidential candidate that can clinch power and fix your challenges? Uh, some, the, the first and foremost, I want to declare that uh, I've looked at the characters that attended that meeting and uh, I, without uh, seeming disrespectful, those are majority are political rejects. Um, and a polit political reject is a person who vies for political office uh, perennially and loses. And that's, that's what these, these people are. Other than just two elected leaders, the rest are not elected. And they do not speak for anyone in the community because I mean Article 1 is very clear that uh, the sovereign power is vested in the individuals, in the citizens, and they, that can be also donated to the elected leader. So now, why, why do you pick, uh, donate for yourself the, 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 the opportunity to speak on behalf of, of the community. And, and I want to say that uh, when they talk about the issues, the problems that we face as a community, water and uh, roads and all these things, clearly those are the things that the elected leaders, the current elected leaders are trying to ad address. Mm -hmm. And the reason they lost office is just be simply because they couldn't address those, those matters. So I, I want to say that uh, some people are missing to be in, in politics. Mm -hmm. You know, in politics, there are allowances given for attending functions. And I think some of these people are really out there to get allowances for themselves and uh, with having hung around there out there without a salary for years it's it's clear that uh, they, they, oh, they are having issues yes they do I, I can tell you the deputy president's meetings uh, because I, we represent the people that uh, are invited to those meetings they tell us they're going to the, to pick an allowance because uh, there is poverty people are poor people need money they, they cannot make ends meet 
cost of fuel has gone up. So they need someone to carry part of this burden. And, and the where deputy does president, that money come the, from? What I, I, I do not know because I know they all those people, you see hundreds, thousands of people, they are all given money. Actually, you don't go to Amboseli and uh, you don't tell me those people are paying for themselves. I mean, I know them. These are people we represent. They they cannot afford the they cannot afford the the the, the, the whatever the, the amount of money they would have to pay for their rooms and their own transport. And they cannot also go and spend a day or two and not work and expect to make a living. So they're out there to make some money. And it's well, clearly well, the honorable <laughs> boy, I have to say here that I I don't know the truth in what you're saying. I don't know what the facts are. I'll just treat them as uh, your view. Yeah, again, those, those are the facts on the ground. That is what is happening Those leaders the are not here to defend themselves, so I just want to say that those are the views <laughs> of our honorable boy. But uh, Dr. Pamela Odiambo, what are the stakes that you see in this election? Because we'll shortly be looking at the functions of the president and the authority of the president. Why then does it become so important uh, that communities, uh, regions would be rallying around a presidential candidate or crafting an agenda for a presidential candidate? Uh, in this conversation, noted earlier that uh, the politics of Kenya, as it is, it's about interest, and I think one of the, uh, the truth. Now, there is the interest of the individual, there is the community, there is the general, overall, universal interest of everyone in the country. Mm -hmm. And so, I think I already mentioned earlier, according to me, uh, what's at stake in Kenya. Uh, as a representative of the people and somebody who has also been crisscrossing this country meeting Kenyans. What is the heart in the heart of any Kenyan today, big or small, is the peace. Kenyans wants prosperity. Kenyan wants shared prosperity. Mm -hmm. Not just one person prospering as the others languish in abject poverty. Kenyans want to see development. Kenyans want medicine in their hospitals. And if we look at it that way, then you, I, will, I will put it to you that all these communities, if you look at them coming together, what they are saying is actually more or less the same for their regions. However, there is also these uh, personal ambitions where uh, somebody thinks it has to be me. Mm -hmm. And if you look at them critically, there is no real big new idea that we are talking about. For example, if you look at the concept of what uh, uh, the Wuda group are imagining, that uh, the, the, the so-called bottom-up economy, this is exactly what the evolution has done to Kenya. Uh, and the, 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 the governance experts said it critically and clearly that the intent of the evolution was to bring services closer to the people, bring development closer to the people and the resources whereby if all these resources were used properly and people are helped and capacitated properly then we would be having cottage industries everywhere right. in this country so that the youth with their skills are supported and helped to access resources to be able to start their own uh, uh, production of something then we would be uh, doing the right thing Okay. But because of the veering off, we are not right there. So I see a lot of best, uh, vested uh, wrong ambition in some of our leaders. And much as we keep talking about us Kenyans moving away right. from the tribalistic nature of our politics, leaders have kept reminding people that, oh, you know, you are Kambas, you are Nandis, you are Luos. And, 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 and this kind of thing is needs to be addressed and we need to agree at least for once to mm -hmm. forge forward a Kenya which is addressing Kenyan issues. All right. It doesn't have to be a summer issue. If we talk of water, in Migori County, which I represent, we have issues with, with water, much as the Lake Victoria is very much available here. Dating back to the colonial times, much of the time we are not able to access the Lake Victoria water and even use it for irrigation. All right. These are the issues that need to be addressed. So we don't have to make it Kamba, we don't have to make it Nandi, we don't have to make it Kikuyu. Oh, we all right, just need all to right make Dr. It Dr. Dr. Pamela, I hear you. Let's take a look at uh, quickly what the Constitution says about um, the functions and the authority 
of the president. You're talking about Article 131, Sabbatical 1. It tells of um, the authority of the president being that he is the head of state and government. He exercises executive authority of the republic with the assistance of uh, the deputy president and the cabinet secretaries. He is the commander-in-chief of the Kenya Defense Forces. He chairs the National Security Council. He is a symbol of national unity. Also, uh, Sabbatical 2 talks of the president shall respect and uphold and safeguard the constitution. He, shall safeguard, he or she shall safeguard sovereignty of the republic, promote and enhance national unity, ensure protection of human rights, protection of fundamental freedoms and rule of law, promote diversity of the people and communities of interest, and the functions of the president as per Article 132, Sabbatical 2, to nominate and appoint the CSs, the Attorney General, Principal Secretaries, nominate and appoint High Commissioners, Ambassadors, and um, other consular representatives, nominate and appoint diplomatic, uh, well, consular reps, I just read that. Um, something else is that um, he chairs the cabinet meetings, he directs and coordinates ministries and government departments, he receives foreign diplomatic representatives, he confers national honors, of course, guided by existing laws, he declares, he can declare state of emergency as per law and he can declare war upon parliamentary approval now we are 322 days to the general election that's about 10 months 19 days because the election will be held on the 9th of august 2022 um, being what is predetermined in the constitution and governor kimemi of course we've seen uh, so many leaders coalescing al around uh, different leaders uh, from Mount Kenya region. You've seen the Mount Kenya Forum coming up with an agenda. And when you look at the provisions of the constitution, they sort of show an indicator of somebody who is here to defend the interests of a nation. Why, the, why then does it become so much an issue? Is it an issue of trust? And as you reflect on Mount Kenya region, what must the region have in the next president? Uh, I hope I got the question properly, uh, <clears throat> but of course, what, what, what I think the issues, you, as you see, uh, is the competition for power and resources, and the understanding now that people must be in government. I mean, our communities want want to be inside government because still government becomes a very key indicator in terms of development and resource distribution uh, to, to the uh, to the country, and, and the president still remains very critical in terms of determining how development shapes up in, mm -hmm. in the in the country because we have not been able to strengthen the evolution and put money into the county so that then you you, you move focus from the presidency to to the governor or to the county to the county governments mm -hmm. so oh, what you what you're seeing are competitions for for power and resources uh, you, you 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 see the co the caucus uh, with, with mother kalua has come up with a spokesman I'm sure another caucus will have come up with. So we are lucky to get a multiplicity of spokesmen, which is also very, which could also complicate. The National Assembly Speaker you know, is also the spokesperson. Yeah, yeah they have the also region. a spokesperson. You have Mbutuli, he's also a spokesperson. By the you know, with the elders, we have another one coming up. Uh, of course, the issue of you know what we require maybe, and that these are issues that that you know come up during during transitions. Uh, this multiplicity of issues and uh, whether those with interest. Uh, those who want to take positions to where they can be able to advance mm -hmm. their interest, either their own personal interest or the community interest or the national interest. But these interests are very uh, multifaceted. So uh, I, th I think what is important is to is to uh, you know allow allow people to to dis you know to, to engage in democratic you know discussions. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, I can assure you what what we are working out uh, with the leadership in the, in the Mount Kenya region is to come up with with a, with a, with a, with, a, with, a, with a, one, one, one inch agreeing. What is what is your interest in the national? In the, in the so next. for you as the governor of Nyandaro, one of the is it ten, <coughs> eleven counties in the region? Yes. What is your proposed formula to arriving at that? Because you have all these, like you say, different spokespersons, different formations, different fora. What is your proposed formula uh, for the region? Well, of course, between now and these twenty-two days are too many in, in the politics. I can assure you, what you see now, and what you be seeing generally, are totally different scenarios from what you from what you see here. So, I, I personally, I don't panic. Let, let spokesmen emerge. Let them put their table, you know, their agenda on the table. Ultimately, we should come up with one, one, one people of interest that to, uh, you know, drive the agenda. Do, do you see the, that happening the, at a time that you have a lot of oh, political affiliations? Yes, it is happening with all, all the governors. We are working as, as one team. We are also consulting with members of parliament, with the senators, uh, with those who are, who are, these are some of the people who have been in, in, in power and out of power. They are also important. We we'll also bring them on board. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we come up with one. Mm -hmm. because the, 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 the needs are basic. Roads, 
water, good health, you know, education. The interests, the economic interests are, interests are the same, but the, the, the complication comes in, mm -hmm. and, you know, who, who, who takes power? Mm -hmm. <laughs> who becomes the deputy? Maybe that's what people are looking at, who becomes the president? I can assure you that is where, and if you are not the president, then what? What are your stakes? This what communities will be, you can see in, in Okambani what's happening, you can see in central Kenya what is happening, western, all, all the legions, okay. people are putting their stake. And I think moving forward is to ensure that we have a government that contains or that comprises all these interests, mm -hmm. yeah, particularly on the economic table. Okay. Yeah, the, the politics, yes, somebody emerges as a president, but on the, on the economic table, what do it, does each community? Can each community take what is due to theirs in terms okay. of, you know, you know the, the, the way the constitution dictates? Mm. R right. And um, over the weekend, there was a meeting of Raila Odinga with several leaders from the coastal region. They made quite a bit of um, declarations there. Listen. Listen. <laughs> Tuko na uchumi za mawati Blue economy hapa Amba inaweza kutajirisha Sio watu wa pwani peke yake Lakini taifa letu loti la Kenya Sisi kwa kauli moja tumekubali sote Kwamba raisi wa 2022 Na ndilo azimio la leo Ni Raila Amolo Odinga Katika debe la uraisi Kama si Raila Amolo Odinga ni Hassan Joho Na kama si Hassan Joho ni Raila Amolo Odinga. Na sisi tunaamini kama ulipigana kwa haki zetu bila kuwa raisi. Basi utakapokuwa raisi wewe ndio halisi wa kuyasimamia yale mambo uliyapigania. Tunataka kujua mwaka 2022 tutaelekeza inti yetu kuelekea mwelekeo gani? Mtu ame graduate Mtu yuko na mambo makubwa anambiwa wewe tutakuregesha pale pale katika wilbaro ati kazi ni kazi. Kama kazi ni kazi mbona leo atafuta uraisi? Mbona leo unatafuta uraisi kama kazi ni kazi? Alright. Um, well, mwaka alfu ishirina mbili. I'm sure he means alfu mbili ishirina mbili. Uh, but um, Javas... As you reflect on this, because we'll hear a lot of this, especially in the final three months to the general election. So how do we position ourselves as Kenyans? Because all these communities of interest or leaders of the same interest will come. But how do Kenyans secure what they want to see in leadership? Because mm -hmm. the current challenges speak volumes. Bituku, modern politics and toxic ethnic homogeneity is the ban of our governance from the time of our independence. It is sad that some politicians are frozen from the neck upwards. When you listen to some politicians speak, you get an amazing sense of a bankruptcy of ideas. And this bankruptcy is what, unfortunately sometimes, is bestowed upon the roles and responsibilities of political or elective office. Look, we continually get it wrong. We have not reimagined our nation beyond the demarcations that were done by the settler community in Kenya. When you look at even how the committee of experts and the architecture of our constitution, the manner in which our counties are mapped, it is a collection of ethnic groupings, balkanization. And that is a sad state that does not even, in a way, attempt to create as as a nation that appreciates the ethnic diversity that we are even looking at in the preamble of our constitution, or even what the president is supposed to do in Article 129, sub Article 2, engaging in principles and appreciating the principles of service and governance for the benefit of the people. When you look at, for example, the discussions and the pronouncements from Naivasha, mm -hmm. while it has been foiled in some good words as Mount Kenya interests, let us just strip it, strip, let us strip the onion and call it as it is, the Akikuyu interest, not Mount Kenya interests. And what is the benefit of propagating Kikuyu interests when we are looking at somebody who should lead a nation for the greater good of the whole? 
comparatively mm -hmm. look at for example the united states california is a huge state with a very high gdp compared to very many states in the u.s has it produced presidents or a president or the highest number of presidents or vice presidents no in fact if it's a question of the highest number of vice presidents it is virginia if it's a question of the highest number of presidents in the u.s it is uh, uh, it is a uh, rather vice president it's indiana for presidents it's ohio and virginia virginia has got produced eight uh, ohio produced seven so far we have not seen people of california saying for example that because our gdp is so big we must continually be at the center and produce the president <coughs> if not then the vice president mm -hmm. here in kenya we keep on grabbing the elephant by the tail and hope that we are going to contain it if at all we want to look at a question of leadership in this country and sadly we may not depart from it until we rethink the architecture of our governance mm -hmm. we must come to a point where we are saying that these conglomerations of tribes agitating for interests termed community interests but their tribal interests is not going to take this country forward and this is continued to be seen through the lenses of even some proposed amendments to the constitution you've heard some say that we need to introduce amendments that will have two vice presidents of course initially we wanted to have a dpm and two dpms etc we can even have 50 vice pres deputy presidents if we want mm -hmm. that will not lead to good governance in kenya as long as we continue to get the architecture wrong as long as we continue to have leaders who are going to push for ethnic interests those interests being uh, stage managed and managed actually by a few tri tribal chiefs we continue to move away from the intended aspirations of our people's governance by the constitution of kenya but, now, but, but does it not make a case because um communities or a country begins at the basic unit from family from family where do you go is it wrong to affiliate from no in fact tribes are a sociological, a sociological reality that must be embraced but we do not look most of the time at these tribes eh, or ethnicity from the positivistic angle mm -hmm. where it helps us in commerce in human relations when you look at the manner in which we look at ethnicity in this country it is a manner that negates cohesiveness mm -hmm. we look at it as us versus them that's how we look at it okay. it negates the in it, the proper sociological purpose of ethnicity mm -hmm. that should bring a people together okay uh, javas i want us to wind up because you are running out of time and there's a tweet here did i just lose it by a viewer who is saying this is uh, nathan bosir rumors indicate that governor kimeme is the wing that is rooting for mudavadi can he confirm i think he's asking this based on a lot of the movements that we've seen in the mountain you can respond to that but also that question about um just to take you back about the absorption rates because yeah. uh, sometime is it last year in the nine month uh, report of uh, the control of budget the absorption rates for uh, budgets uh, the budget then in uh, 20 i mean in Nyandaro County was not doing so well. What is the correct position uh, comparing that to what was uh, given by Speaker Wahome? Yeah, I think I think the speakers are still playing the politics. Was the, the when in in the in the first year of devolution, 2017, absorption rate was 70 percent. The subsequent year was 80 percent, and we, and we have been on. Last year was 85.23 percent. You know this, and I'm sure this year will, will even be better than. And part, part, you know, part of why we don't, we are not, we, we are not able to absorb all the resources is because we don't get them. So some of the resources come after the, <laughs> after that year of June. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing you can do other than put them into paid imbues and pay in the subsequent year. Two, two, the incapacity of the, te, you know, the the the, 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 the contractors. You cannot pay. I know there's that temptation. Why don't you pay him so that you you are seen to be clearing all the development budget and then you can automatically what what will happen? The federal will disappear with public money. And, and money doesn't go back. You know, there's this notion that money goes to treasury. There's no treasury. It's, it's, it's back to the governor's office, governor's treasury. Then it is until he completes the road, then you pay that person, you know, you know that money. So there, there are, there's one option, which, which I think is criminal, to pay him for works not done. Then you are seen to be a clean governor who has spent 100%, or wait until he completes 
Mm -hmm. in, in so, so do I get you right? If a project was uh, commissioned uh, or rather um, started in the financial year 2020, yes. 2021. And by the time the financial year is concluding, he has uh -huh. just done 70%. You so, know, just pay 70% or 60. Okay. So that he's able to, the money is rolled over. So the, the balance of the resources. It will be paid in the new financial year. As a do you need day. another law because now no. the budget has changed? No, I don't think you need another law. The, the money is just, you know, devoted into the, into the project. Okay. In the ensuing year. So that yeah. is why you can't, uh -huh. you, 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 can, you can decide to pay him. Mm -hmm. and assume that he will complete the projects. But uh, what if he doesn't come back and... So, or, or, or so that governor. notion was very clear to, 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 to clear there. Okay. The, you know, the absorption rate has been over and above. Last year was 85.29%. Okay. That question about um, that uh, you are in the wing that is rooting for Musala Mudavadi... Is no, no, no. It, I think it's, it's, it's just a fallacy. You know, just because Mudavadi came to my county, uh, tw you know, twice, mm -hmm. the Mutua was there. Uh, we, we have had Kibwana. Kibwana Kibwana has been there. Both of them private aspirants and I'm sure others are coming mm -hmm. so what I, what I, what I said let, let them come let them come and sell their manifestos I can't buy anybody from coming to Nyandaro County I'll mobilize you know people they so have to listen to them should, every leader should come and Ruto has been there Laila is coming let leaders come and okay. you know so there's no particular candidate that we are all, that, all, that all, we are all right and let's take a look at the feedback that has been sent to us via Twitter Jacob Abere says the devolutions caucus using governance and law tool 80% have scored average D plus and 20% scored C plane. So to speak, they don't deserve second term or any elective seats. I don't know how that research was done. Um, Timo Sioma, Governor Kimemi is already a pensioner, earning salary as a governor, and he's seeking an additional pension. Why we, while we have millions of unemployed youth, so you get elected at 21, you serve two terms, retire at 31, and then burden taxpayers until <laughs> your demise. No. Engineer Lazaro, devolved corruption and tug of war between county chiefs and their deputies has eroded devolutions caucus. Almost every county chief has a corruption case in the court of law, or in a court of law. Dan Kimutai, very true, Javas. This is Kenya, where politics is not about helping ordinary people, but for self-interest. Odongo Rolex, devolution is the best. We can celebrate mostly by the minority sides in this nation. Roads, hospitals, and entire infrastructure were left behind by the government. Let's give it time, even though Governor's scorecard is very low. MCA 2022, Mukuru Kwa Jeng. <laughs> okay, campaigning platform, yeah? Abdirahman, to be part of the next government, communities have to align whom they believe is a strong candidate for the position of president. Every leader talks of a blueprint that should work for his favor to win, in his favor to, to win the electorates. At the end, we shall have one winner. Let peace prevail. And I think that's the best point to leave it at because uh, Dr. Pamela Odiambo told us that uh, what's at stake here is mainly peace and continuity of a nation. I want to thank you all. I wish you had time to take final views. But Dr. Pamela Odiambo joining us from Kisi, Governor Francis Kimemia from Anyandaro County, mm -hmm. Robert Mbui, MP Kathiani, Javas Bigambo, Governor's Expert. And the conversation continues what's at stake in 2022. And what's your role as a citizen uh, to continue with the conversation and uh, stay tuned to Citizen TV for more of this. My name is Sam Gituku. Up next is um, Mata Soshi with Willis Raburu. Do stay tuned. See you some other time. Bye for now.